Oh, absolutely. And, and actually, it was Congressman Grayson that sent a letter um, and asked me to sign on the letter with him, urging that, uh, that there would be no prosecution if Armando were to issue licenses before the, the final ruling or before the final um, interpretation. And uh, he did. He said he would not uh, prosecute. Up next on Central Florida Spotlight, you'll meet a person who was behind the push to have same-sex marriages become legal in Florida. Our conversation with a member of Equality Florida when we come right back. Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight. I'm Greg Warmoth here at the Osceola County Courthouse, the site of an historic day. On January 6th, we had our first Central Florida weddings between same-sex couples. One of the men who's behind this push with Equality Florida talked with us about what's next for Central Florida, what's next for the state, and what's next for the country. I'm here now with Michael Farmer, Equality Florida. Congratulations, January 6th, come and gone. What's the reaction been? You know, I mean, I think that there has just been absolute joy. You know, people have been waiting their entire lives, sometimes decades, to have this recognition from the state and the comfort and benefit of knowing that their family is going to be protected. Um, so it's just a, an amazing day. Talk about that protection and that comfort. How about employers? What's the reaction on their end? Because now they're faced with a, a different obstacle than they've had in the past. You know, I mean, I think the majority of large employers in Florida, many of whom signed on to um, amicus briefs supporting uh, the lawsuit to overturn the ban on same-sex marriage, um, look at this as a positive thing because it clarifies, um, you know, what they can do for their, their employees. They want to make sure their employees are feeling supported at work. Um, and for folks who work for these companies, it's a really important thing because it could mean potentially saving their partner's life in a situation where they have health insurance or don't have it because um, some companies only offer health insurance to married couples. Let's talk about that and what those companies now will do. This is big because now an employer knows what it's supposed to do, but bigger for the employee, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you um, have health insurance, we, we know that, you know, if somebody who has health insurance has much better outcomes than somebody who doesn't in terms of their overall health, in terms of preventative medicine. And so it can literally mean life or death for people if you have access to those types of benefits. All right, let's talk about the economic impact of this to the state of Florida. It's a big number. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I think um, there's the Williams Institute study that showed that $182 million um, was going to be the initial impact of bringing marriage equality to Florida. But I think it's probably much greater than that. If you think about it, Florida is a unique wedding destination. We have all of the facilities um, to make this happen. And so we're primed to really benefit from um, this as a state with a tourism-based economy. And let's talk about the Williams uh, Institute with the statistics. They're saying something to the neighborhood of 50,000 same-sex couples here in the state of Florida. What's your reaction to that number? Is that about where it is? You know, it's one of those things that's it's kind of an elusive number. It's really hard to tell because right now um, there's no census data, which is the primary data that's used to determine those type of things. Um, the census doesn't include LGBT people right now. Hopefully one day it will. Um, but so they use, you know, a different method to try to identify that. And so, you know, it could vary. Um, that's the best estimate that we have right now. For you, you're a young man. Uh, you had told me before we started that you didn't know that it would happen this quickly. Why did this happen from discussion to reality in what seems to be a pretty quick period of time once it got to that point? Well, I mean, you know, folks have been working on, you know, marriage equality for over 40 years um, in, different, in different ways, and I think we've just seen it move at a sort of hyper speed in the last particularly five years, two to five years, and I think we just reached that critical mass um, in um, successful lawsuits all throughout the country. Um, in overturning bans um, on same-sex marriage. And we've also reached a place in public opinion where 57% of Floridians support the freedom to marry. And I think, you know, courts definitely respond to public opinion. So in Florida, we had four state judges and a federal judge overturn the ban, and that's really, um, really all it took. And so as somebody who grew up in Apopka, I never really thought that I, you know, would see the day when, when that would happen. I thought I'd have moved away or you know, have not lived to, 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 to see it, and it's just really an amazing thing. And overall, we've been in this for about a week. Your reaction and what you've seen, the reaction from the general public on this? You know, I think it's um, what Equality Florida has said, you know, all along, is that the sky has not fallen. Um, you know, I got onto the 417 this morning, and it was still working. Cars were, people were still going to work. Um, really, the only thing that has changed is that um, gay and lesbian couples and their children get to wake up 
and know that they live in a world where if something happens to them, their family won't be torn apart, their property won't be taken from them, and that the state of Florida recognizes that their family is just as important as everyone else. So Michael, those couples that you talked about, where should people go to find out more information about this? What types of benefits they would receive if they were to get married? Where can they go? What's the good resource for that? Absolutely, they can go to equalityflorida.org. We put together a really exhaustive fact sheet for people who have questions. It's really complicated. You know, it's a legal issue, and for normal people, that can be really overwhelming. So we've had a group of pro bono attorneys put together a page at equalityflorida.org um, or eqfl.org. Either one will work. Um, and folks can go there to hopefully get some answers to their questions. We've also got attorneys w working with us on a pro bono basis to answer questions that might be a little more elusive for people so they can reach out to us um, via our website for that as well. And you mentioned earlier that this was a big ec economic impact for Florida. Are you starting to get feedback from couples from outside the state that want to now come here, hold their ceremony, Disney tourism type uh, numbers? You, are you starting to see that impact? Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, certainly, you know, I've just personally heard of folks that are planning on coming to Florida. I mean, I can't imagine a more beautiful place to have your wedding, um, you know, to make that a reality for them. And so I think that's certainly something that we're going to start to see. Up next on Central Florida Spotlight, we'll bring in WFTV legal analyst Bill Schaefer, and he will weigh in on the legal challenges that gay marriage now faces. Welcome back to this on-location edition of Central Florida Spotlight. I'm Greg Warmoth in Osceola County, an historic place for Central Florida because it was here where the first same-sex marriages happened on January 6th of 2015. So is it possible that those marriages could be overturned by legal wranglings? We brought in WFTV legal analyst Bill Schaefer to get his opinion. Bill, you are in the same building where this historic moment happened. When you look back on that date, do you think what happened here will be unwound through the U.S. or state Supreme Courts? In a word, no, I do not. This current status, as we know, is that the Florida Supreme Court has refused to weigh in on the matter at this point. There is now a petition before the United States Supreme Court for the United States Supreme Court to weigh in on this subject. Could this be a case of be careful what you wish for in terms of if you wish that the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, heard this, the ruling could come that this now is the law of the land, not just in Florida and the 36 states. Absolutely. And the opponents obviously have to take their, their stand and go to the only course that's left open to them, which uh, on the state level would be the Florida Supreme Court. On the federal level, it's the United States Supreme Court. But you know what, Greg? This is a moment in history, and don't think that these justices, whether they be justices with the Florida Supreme Court or justices with the United S States Supreme Court, know that this is a moment in history, and they're not likely to try to turn back this tide that is just sweeping over the nation. And this, what happened here, and when you met Armando Ramirez, as you sat down here today, you said to him he was brave to do what he did in the light of criticism. He was the first clerk of courts out of 67 counties to say, we're going to do this, like it or not. Absolutely. That was a brave thing for him to do right out of the gate, never uh, hesitated and didn't equivocate. I think that one of the things that we need to talk about is what in the world would happen if either the Florida Supreme Court said, you know what, the Defense of Marriage Act is constitutional, or the United States Supreme Court did. If the Florida Supreme Court were to say, you know what, uh, we're going to uphold the Defense of Marriage Act, the problem wouldn't be undoing the union of between the same-sex couples. The union is going to stand. The marriage will stand. What you have to look past is, would the benefits that's the second part of this. Are the benefits that are extended to uh, mar traditional married couples, would they be then extended to same-sex couples? There would be the argument that absolutely not. So what you're saying is those who have been married so far prior to the state or U.S. Supreme Court hearing this will remain married regardless of the decision. But what we're talking about really is the benefits that they currently look as though they will be receiving. That, that's, and that's a very significant part of this, um, uh, uh, this same-sex marriage. 
If the Supreme Court, by the way, were to come, which I doubt, but let's say that the United States Supreme Court said, no, we're going to uphold the Defense of Marriage Act. You know, that places us in a, a kind of a unique position along with 35 other states. That may be the law federally, but you know, each state has a constitution and we have due process in our state constitution that we have in the past construed even more broadly than perhaps due process under the United States Constitution. So Florida could just say, that's fine, so um, federal court, United States Supreme Court, but under our Constitution, we're still going to recognize same-sex marriages. This is a moment in time, a moment in history, and I think when it's all said and done, whether it's done state by state or through the federal um, uh, United States Supreme Court, we're going to see same-sex marriages uh, sanctified throughout the 50 states. And on that note, we'll close the book on this edition of Central Florida Spotlight. A special thanks to Osceola County Clerk of Courts Armando Ramirez, Osceola County Commissioner Cheryl Grebe, Michael Farmer with Equality Florida, and WFTV legal analyst Bill Schaefer. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care.